Uh, cyclists who were born male are to be banned from racing in elite female British cycling events, which I think we can all agree is uh, common sense. Under a new policy published today, racing will be split into two categories, female and open. I am joined now by Olympic silver medalist Sharon Davies. Sharon, thank you very much for hanging on the line for us for a little while there. A victory for common sense? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's taken us quite a long time to get to this point, you know, and obviously world swimming, uh, world athletics have done this and at long last now cycling in this country, not world cycling, unfortunately, but hopefully they'll follow later this year. Um, it, it, you know, we know at the moment there is no way that you can mitigate against male puberty. So we were asking female athletes to start their races knowing that the person next to them, if they were a transgender woman, had an, un had an advantage. And that just was never fair. So we had fair sport for males and unfair sport for females. And now we've got fair sport for both of them. The open category is a great, great way of making sure that everybody's included. And of course, everybody should be included. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the irony, of course, is that some of the uh, full bodied men who were competing in women's sports wouldn't even qualify for the elite levels of the men anyway. So we're probably unlikely to see most of them at all now. But uh, why has this been such a fight, Sharon? Why, why does this matter so much to you? Yeah, good question, isn't it? I mean, originally the fight started with a very bad decision from the IOC. Um, and they, they didn't bother to look at any of the science whatsoever. They literally just listened to the propaganda. They didn't invite any athletes. They didn't invite scientists across the spectrum. They just passed this sweeping you know, statement that until it could be proved different, there was no advantage to being a transgender woman. Well, that's ridiculous, because that's like saying there's no advantage to being a male, and yet we have men and women's sport, and we have done for forever for obvious mm. reasons. Mm. And so it was really that the emphasis should have been on the world of transgender sport to say, right, prove to us that there is no advantage that's still retained. And, of course, they can't do that. There's been 17 yeah. studies so far, and not a single one of them has shown that. Just quickly, Sharon, what about some form of compensation or reparations for all of those women who lost whether it's gold medals, prize money, sponsorship deals, whatever it is, or even, in fact, just dreams, right? You get a lot of college athletes in America, for example, who might have fallen foul of this kind of thing. What about some form of compensation for them, do you think? Yeah, I mean, we haven't had too many situations here in the UK. It's much worse in America. At the moment, in American cycling, there's 50 transgender women. So that's trans-identifying males that are in elite women's sport um, right. cycling. And so there's a lot of people that are missing out in the States. We've just had a young girl in their California track and field who came fourth. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a transgender athlete that was second. And now she doesn't qualify to go through to the, to the state championships. Yeah. And that's a young girl with her dreams, you know. So the emphasis has always been on the dreams of the transgender athlete but no one's been taking any notice of the dreams no. of the young females in their own category of sport. And this doesn't affect males, of course, no. because including transgender men in men's sport makes no difference whatsoever. Yeah. Look, Sharon, can I just say thank you? And also, as well, you are one of the people, very few people who I interview, who I think you... Um, are on the right side of history, really. And that's going to have an incredible legacy beyond, obviously, your own career. Uh, Patrick, um, I just so. wanted to be on the right side for the girls because, you know, all those years ago, nobody really stood up for us during that East German era and I could not stand by and let it happen again. So that's the reason.